let's look at some baking tools. Things that you will need to bake with and how to use them. Let's start with measuring cups. They're one of the first things that you're going to need. I have two types of measuring cups. I have these and I have these. So I can choose which ones I want to use. These are a pretty color, aren't they? Speaking of pretty colors, I also have measuring spoons that match. This set matches with my measuring cups and this set matches with these. Sometimes it's fun to have things that match. So as you can see, the measuring cups come in different sizes and they're usually marked on the handle. This one says one quarter cup. This is one third. This one is one half. And the green one is one cup. It's the same for these. Notice they're marked clearly right here on the handle. And look at how neatly they fit inside of each other. So the measuring spoons are very similar. You notice they fit one inside of the other and they're marked on the handle saying what they're for. This one is one quarter of a teaspoon, T-S-P, teaspoon. One half, one teaspoon, and this is one tablespoon, T-B-S-P, tablespoon. It's the same for these. Now, I also have this super duper set of measuring spoons that go all the way down to one eighth of a teaspoon. Look at how tiny that is. I think you could also call this a dash. But again, they're all marked on the handle. This one also has the milliliters, which I very much enjoy. Next, let's talk about these measuring cups. I'm sure you've seen these around the kitchen as well. So what's the difference between these measuring cups and these measuring cups? Mm, I'm glad you asked. These measuring cups are for liquid measurements and these measuring cups are for dry ingredients. For example, water, juice, butter, oil, all of those things would go into one of these glass measuring cups for liquids. In these, we would put flour, sugar, salt, things like that, dry ingredients. Those go in these cups. If you use this for your dry and this for your wet, your recipe probably won't come out quite right because the volume on the two is a little different for dry and wet. I have several sizes of these. I have this one that's a one cup measure and it goes all the way down to one quarter of a cup. I have this one that's a two cup measure. It also tells me here that this is one pint two cups equals one pint. And it goes all of the way down to a quarter. On this side, it also has milliliters. This cup, this big one, is four cups. That equals one quart. One pint is a half of a quart. So two of these cups would make one of these. It also gives me ounces. And it gives me liters. 
This is a very smart measuring cup. It has a lot of information on it. So those are for your wet ingredients. Now that we have our ingredients measured out, how are we going to mix them together? Let's look at those tools. We have a whisk. This one is a large whisk. I also have a smaller whisk for mixing up smaller things. You can use a spoon. I like to use wooden spoons. You don't have to. You could use a metal spoon or a plastic spoon. And when you're mixing up something thick, like dough, we also have some options for that. One of those is this. This is one of my favorite tools. This is a Danish whisk. I know it looks kind of funny, but it works great. I love this tool. You can also use a spatula. Spatulas come in many different types and styles. This one is my favorite because it's all one piece and it has a nice, stiff, but still bendy end for scraping a bowl. You could use this type of spatula as well. This one is in two pieces though. So sometimes they pop apart right here and different types of things can get stuck in this seam. I also have the tiny spatula for getting things out of little cups like this. When you're making things like pastry that need to have butter worked into the flour, there's another tool that I enjoy using. It's called a pastry blender. And it looks like this. That's a strange little device, isn't it? You use it this way to mix together that cold butter in with the flour. It makes nice flaky pastry. Speaking of pastry, this is a pastry brush. You can dip this into egg whites or butter or milk for spreading on the top of your pastry or bread to give them a nice shine as they cook. We often add fruit juice, like lemon or orange, to our recipes. That's where this comes in handy. I can cut my citrus fruit in half, like a lemon, an orange, or a lime, hold it in my hand, and squeeze the juice out using this tool. I also love the color. When you're working with citrus, sometimes the recipe asks you for zest. So you can use this to rub on the outside of the fruit to get a little bit of that peeling off for extra flavor. There are some other zester tools. This is the only one that I have. I guess I better put that on a gift list. And sometimes we need a bench scraper. You can use this to clean up scoop up dough and to move things around. This comes in very handy for many things and it also has a way to measure here on the side. Sometimes your recipes will tell you to make something a certain number of inches wide or long. So that's why we need a ruler if we want to be precise. I like that this one has one built in. So those are my baking tools. I hope that you can find some of these in your kitchen. Baking tools. Now I'm ready to start baking. <laughs>